much other type of shit, right? And these same ball players that are spending three hundred million dollars in education and all that, and the first thing they doing is saying, "Welcome home, Big Meech." LeBron James uh, tweeted out yesterday, uh, "Welcome home, hmm. Big Meech." What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Please like the video and subscribe. Our target is only a thousand likes. So, LeBron James upset NBA fans on Thursday when he congratulated a convicted drug trafficker after being freed from prison. Demetrius Flanroy, aka Big Mitch, was transferred this week to a residential program in Miami, according to the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And after the news broke, Lakers star LeBron James took to social media and wrote, Welcome home, Big Mitch, with a salute emoji. Given Flanroy's criminal record, he was originally sentenced for 30 years in prison following a 2008 conviction for drug trafficking and money laundering many fans slammed lebron's post so one fan posted lebron supporting drug dealers not my god another posted you're so desperate to seem cool it's pathetic he is always talking all these positive athletes and everything is building schools and telling kids that they need to go and they mm -hmm. need to do better mm -hmm. i know where and they need to this. and they need to do better and you need to there's other things beside the streets and all this other type of shit right and these same ball players that are spending 300 million dollars in education and all that and the first thing they doing is saying welcome home big meets why the fuck would i want to go to school why would I get a job? My nigga, I, you're making me say, he's cap. He's, <laughs> he's cap. He's cap. When you put on, when you, this is what you did to the 16 year old that you telling go to school and be the athlete and do whatever. And you say, welcome home, big meat. Just saying, I'm, yo, go be a gangster. Yeah, sell because, drugs. Because this is, this is who we respect and we love. My nigga, you can be a gangster for 20, 30 years. Go be a gangster for 36 years. Fuck all the bitches, get all the money. Get on accolades. Go do 20 years in jail. Be a god. Yep. We're going to wait for you. Yep. Here's what we're saying. And I'm not saying I ain't got no problem with Big Meech. I fuck with BMF. Big, but big, you ain't, yeah, BMF but you, ain't, you ain't never heard me say I don't understand why niggas is in the street. You ain't never heard me say why niggas, why niggas don't want to get money. I tell you why niggas want to get money. I tell you they want to be big meats and they deny me, nigga. Yeah, it's, listen. You what? Could, you could be a plumber or you could be big meats. I want to be meats. <laughs> Back, yo. If I, yo, if right, I wait. can go get that, that. Fuck that, that nigga. Hold on. No, 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 go, go, go. If I can go get that money and come out, my I got to hit series. <laughs> I know everybody not going to be in his series, but I'm going to go for it. Yep. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to build me my own BMF. I told this motherfucker, if I was 16 years old living in Rochdale Village, Southside Jamaica, Queens, and I saw LeBron James say, welcome home, Big Meech, what I say I'm going to do? I'm selling drugs. I'm forming my niggas. <laughs> LeBron James uh, tweeted out yesterday, uh, welcome home, Mm. Big Meech, and and when he, when I first saw it, I was like, "Who's Big Butter? Do you know who Big Meech is?" Without doing the homework, I really don't know who he you don't is. know who I Big Meech is. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't follow it either. But then I did research, and I was like, "There's there's a drug dealer from mm. I think Florida. He started out in Detroit, maybe spent some time down in Florida. Uh, that they did a TV show based off of Fifty Cent did." Black Mafia family, real life uh, drug dealer, Big Meech and his brother. They built a drug empire. He's been released uh, from prison. And LeBron James felt it necessary to, you know, welcome him home with a tweet. Uh, you're, I think it's a really bad look. I, I think it's part of the reason I, I don't like LeBron James. Uh, it's clout chasing. It's pandering to the ghetto black Twitter crowd. It's it's. It's sending young people in the wrong direction. Let's say LeBron is personal friends with Big Meech. Any of my friends, and I've had some friends that have come home from prison. I didn't find it necessary to tweet it out. I texted or called them. Maybe I even went to their coming home party. But I, I don't, it's not a priority for me to tweet out, hey, welcome home, big homie. Uh, I just think it's a bad look for LeBron James. I, I don't disagree, but, but again... LeBron will do this knowing that he's insulated from criticism 
But would he, again, I'm just asking a question, would he ever dare tweet out some of the accomplishments of, let's say, a Ben Carson or a Thomas Sowell? <laughs> and what would the blowback be? But it, but it goes to that theory that in certain communities, an individual will get home from a prison bid, no matter what the crime, but let's say it's a violent crime, something that was deserved, spend some time in there. They get a party. They get a block party. But then people that come home with a master's degree is going to be a doctor. I don't know if they get that same reception. It, it, this is kind of among, along the same dynamic that we're talking about here. Uh, LeBron has more empathy for big meat uh, than the young white child who was killed on his school property. Is it true Big Meech did a third party cooperation deal to receive a reduced sentence in his case by setting up a known kingpin from St. Louis named Cuffy? Well, that's the word on the street, so let's get into that. First off, for all y'all who don't know who Cuffy is, he is a known kingpin from St. Louis who did business with Big Meech for over 20 years since 1990. And according to him, he is the first person to ever put a million dollars in cash in Big Meech's pockets. And as of today, he claims he was set up by Big Meech, which eventually led to him receiving a 27-year prison sentence. And he claims it all started when Big Meech was in Detroit's county jail when he got indicted in 2005. And while Big Meech was in Detroit's county jail fighting his case, he met a Spanish connect named Fidel Suarez, who had major connections to Mexican cartels out of Los Angeles, California. And Cuffy also claims Fidel was the first target who Big Meech was trying to line up so he can receive a reduced sentence. And Cuffy also claims that the person who Big Meech was using to line up Fidel. I'm Tamara Gatling. I'm making this recording in regards to my dad. He's Dion Gatling. Most people know him as Cuffy. Um, but I wanted to make this recording so I can shed light on some facts. Um, my dad was set up by one of his best friends, which is Demetrius Flanori also known as Big Meech. Um, my dad and Meech have been friends for 30 years plus. Um, I've known Meech my whole life. Um, I look at him like an uncle. Like this situation has been completely devastating on so many different levels. And there's still so many questions that aren't answered at um, this point i can only shed light on what i know for sure to be facts and hopefully one day i will have the complete um truth but in 2011 around that time meech reached out to my dad in regards to creating a bmf movie so he me took my dad up with a woman named tammy cohen's at the time tammy was Meech's power of attorney also she owned the life right so my dad was working with meech tammy um t basically trying to work on a movie deal so at finally arrested my dad and we received the discovery he knew exactly who cs1 was and he told me and my mom that it was tammy cohen's at that time we really did not want to believe we wanted to give meech the benefit of the doubt um it was really really hard to believe that meech would set my dad up it was almost unbelievable um so we we were able to like reach out, um, get a message to Meech, and basically let him know that Tammy was an informant. <clears throat> we later received a message from him saying that it had to be a misunderstanding. Um, just call her, she'll straighten this out, um, so on, so on. And at this time, my dad was like, I'm not dumb, I'm not about to call an informant Chelsea and myself we were all we all before all of that you feel me right Chelsea is a day one nigga you understand what I'm saying yes sir and see me I'm the first nigga put a million dollars in his pocket he never seen that till he came to the loop you feel me I heard he about you dog that. I heard you was just an oh, outstanding yeah, dude yeah. man take care of your business and your reputation in a good way preceded itself so i understand now based on from what we've dealt with and seen with 
this whole thing with Tammy, man. Speak on that for me if you can, because it's perplexing. Well, what they did, what Meech and Tammy did is called it because you're not in the system. Thank God you're not. I, like, I hate to see brothers in this system. But brothers who are familiar with this system, it's a nasty, nasty system. What Meech and Tammy did was called a third-party cooperation. What happened was... This call is from a federal prison. Originally, I was put with Tammy. I paid for the script. I put out, I paid a quarter million dollars. That's my script. That's why 50, when he came in, because we, we put a, a assistant deceased order in through my attorney. That's why they couldn't do a motion picture. That's why you didn't see the BMF story on the, on the big screen. So 50 ran it through that star shit that he ran that other corny shit he, that he do. So what happened was, homie, was I wasn't even the original target. They wanted to get a little Mexican. He's actually a cartel member out of LA named Suarez. You'll see his name in the paperwork, Fidel Suarez. He was the initial target. You feel me? Right. He was the initial target. But with me calling in while they were trying to set up Fidel Suarez, she clicked over and told the Fed or the agents who was listening to her and Suarez, hold on, this is Cuff. And when they heard the name Cuff, they w went fucking crazy. And that's when, when, when her and Meech turned the scheme toward me. You feel me? So what it did, what it did was, it, this was what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to give Meech a time cut for her cooperation and set me up. But also, it kills two birds with one stone. It puts me in jail, and now they don't have to split any of the revenue with me. My buddy and my partner along with me was named, his name is Louis Burrell. That's MC Hammer's big brother. That's who Tammy was coming out here to see. There you, that's, that, that, that was me. There and that you, was, that and, was, and that I'm going to tell, tell you the year. That, that was 2015. No, that was like 14. Yeah, way early than that. It started way early than that. Way early than that. Around 2010, homie. Way early than that. I'm sorry. So yeah, we got to go way back. We, yeah, we we put we put fifty million dollars on the table through Lion, Lionsgate Films through Lewis Burrell's Connect uh, because Lewis is that the uh, nigga he a bait nigga out there but he he fucks around he really fucks around on the music tip but he also fucks around in the movie industry up there. Now what we did not know is why Tammy would turn down that deal with me and Lewis Burrell getting twenty percent of, of, of of that budget. You understand what I'm saying for a finder's fee. So what ended up happening was we didn't know that they had other plans and that she was sleeping with the feds and that and, 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 and that they would put me off in prison and run away with my script and don't have to give me anything. So it, it, it was supposed to give me a time cut and knock me out of my percentage, me and Louis Burrell out of our percentage for the finder's fee with, Louis, with, with Lionsgate's film. Well, Lionsgate's when Louis went so, so they backdoored us. Lionsgate's shot it down when Louis Burrell wasn't no, no longer a part of it. You feel me? Right. So, Tammy's whole thing fell apart. Meach couldn't get a time cut because they found out Tammy has no, she has no credibility because when you can't have a relationship with a federal agent, now you have no credibility. So they thing blew up. They things fell all the way apart and blew up. That's why Meach didn't get a, get a time cut. But Tammy testified in open court that she signed up to be a DA informant to give Demetrius Flannery a time cut. This call is from a federal prison. Special Agent Keith Cromer testified that Demetrius Flannery knew about this whole thing, but he just wanted to keep his name out of the out of the documents. The special agent told Flannery that 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 he could not do that. He could only do that if Cuff don't go to trial. And with Cuff's record, he can't afford to go to trial. You understand what I'm saying? Correct. But in the midst of all of this, she ends up flipping on the, on the special agent Keith Cromer, and the whole deal went in the trash. So that's why we're at the point to where we're at now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This How long does your relationship go back with Meech, Cuff? How long have you known him? What You guys go 1990, back... 1990, homie. 1990, homie. 1990. My, 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 my beautiful daughter that you that you talk with, my son, and my other daughter, they look at this nigga, call this nigga uncle, homie. Now, from my understanding, you guys reached out to him when the paperwork came down. She said that you knew who the... 
CI was and you told her in your in her in her mom and you guys sent a message to Meech. What was his response when this stuff came down and you were like, yo, bro, what, what's going on? What what was what did you get for Meech? When I was when I got locked up, homie, and, 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 and when I seen where this whole conspiracy was coming from, I laughed at it and I didn't believe in it. And I knew that Meech could come forward and kill the whole conspiracy. Just saying that, that the conspiracy is based on Meech communicating from Tammy, sending me a truckload of drugs. It's all made up from jail, homie. He could have killed this whole deal. They never had any drugs. You understand what I'm saying? But that's how conspiracy works in this system, in this nasty system. But when Meech shot down the offer, uh, when my uh, we sent my attorneys out, he was at F, uh, uh, FCI Lumpoc in California. And he responded back to my attorneys that he didn't want to have nothing to do with nothing. And he didn't, and, and he stopped communicating with them. So then that told my attorneys right there that Demetrius Flannery is a part of this whole deal. And I couldn't believe it. You feel me? Hmm. So that's what, that, that's what his response was. And he don't know nothing about all this. Well, well, Demetrius Flannery has been locked up since 2005 and how are you my unindicted he's listed in my paperwork homie as my unindicted co-conspirator serving 30 years at F FCI Lumpoc in California how are you in my paperwork man and how are you this this famous drug dealer who's in magazines and books and movies and you are in, in, in bed with a government informant that testified in court that she uh, cooperated and set your nigga up a 30 year partner to give you a time cut. How are you this celebrity drug lord, but you in bed with the, the with a with a government informant? And how you not how do you not know about this? And you 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 in my documents is my co-defendant, my unindicted co-defendant. 